Uh, hello, uh, this is Mustafa and this is going to be the fifth tutorial on using Ladybug for Dynamo for our very first release which is version 006 of Ladybug for Dynamo. Uh, in the last videos I talked about uh, taking the EPW files in, uh, we use the location data from EPW to draw a sound path then we stop there, we say, okay, that's the sound pass, now we need some test points. In the previous video, I showed you like how to generate test points, and I showed you the legend parameters and how you can use some values to color that surface in test points uh, based on an analysis. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can put them all together for calculating a sunlight average analysis. And again, that ex the example file is 0 0.3 sunlight average analysis. Make sure open in manual. Don't open the other way. I mean, you can do it, then you will see the result. Uh, okay, I was in a geometry. Yes. Okay, so what is sunlight hours? So sunlight hours, or I think like sometimes they call it daylight hours, is the number of hours that you can see the direct, you can get the direct sun, which means you can see the sun wherever it is in the sky. Sunlight average is, is a standard that mainly is useful for urban design and more and more is getting into the uh, local regulations and that's one of the reasons that people are using it uh, to, for example, if you have a residential unit in many cities, like you have to make sure that during like 21st of December or like 1st of January, you get like uh, at the minimum two to three hours of sunlight. So that's what we're going to, to calculate. So how, how can you calculate that? If I know where the sun vectors are, which I already know using the sun path, and then I have some test point, I can calculate the amount of the number of sun vectors or sun positions that every test point can see. And then I can map them there. Done, that's what sunlight hours mean. Okay, let me go ahead and start doing this, but I disconnect some vectors from here. So we can just check, uh, and this is important for any analysis, don't run it, just check what you're doing, make sure everything makes sense, and then go for the analysis that can take some time. So what we have here is Again, we have two geometries, uh, the two surfaces that I generated here. Uh, I just rotated a little bit one of the surfaces to make it a little bit more interesting. Not really interesting, but again, like if you're using it like on top of Revit, you can just take whatever geometry that you have from Revit and bring it into, into Dynamo. Here, the, the sun pass that we check together. So what, what's happening is uh, there is a file path. You get the location from the file path connected here for the location and then we are drawing the sum positions or sum vectors for the 621st and uh, between hour 7 to 20 which which is like the, the daylight average you can you can leave this to 1 to 24 and the sum pass will filter them but this is just like I think this is when you, when you know something. And again, I connect the error report to a watch because I hope at some point I get an error so I can show you how to fix that. Uh, and uh, maybe we get an error here from this guy. I don't know. Let's connect this here. Because sometimes the same file which is working easily here, you run it again and it gives you an error. I think, I don't know why exactly, but it's easy to fix. Uh, so I want I wanted to show it to you in, in the videos, hopefully. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and run it. So what will happen is we will get the surfaces, the the test points will be generated, but, but this is not going to run. And the reason it's not going to run is, again, as I said, just check the uh, inputs. And if there is no underline on the right, that's a required input. Some vectors are required. It's not there, so this is not going to run. And again, in Dynamo, because that's not connected, you can see this is like light gray. It means this won't be executed, but when it's dark gray, it means like this has all the inputs and it will be executed when, when you run it. Okay, so I'll just go here and press run and let's see what will happen. Run is started. Yeah, 
else and it's taking some time. Hey, <laughs> Dynamo crashed. So I didn't want you to see this, but sometimes it happens. Close the program. Let me open it again and see like if it's gonna happen again. Yeah, like be ready for that. Like it's a still like Dynamo is still under development. Uh, Ladybug is under development, and uh, many times it's really hard to like point finger to someone and say that's your fault or your fault. I think it's just like the nature of uh, where this thing is, and it can happen. And make sure to save the files. And maybe it's because I'm capturing videos like this. That was the first time I could. I actually crashed Dynamo. As I said, like I have done, like this thing gives me error, but I've never really crashed Dynamo. Okay, let's try it again. And fingers crossed. okay oops everything works fine and again you see like I didn't make any changes to the file this is the same file I opened it again and it worked so yeah this is how Dynamo is uh, right now so it's just but it does worth it if you ask me like the, the potential is there yes there are stuff like still under development but it's important to learn all of them and get yourself familiar with all the stuff, with all the possibilities. So when it's really mature, like you'll be the people who are really going to enjoy like the new possibilities using something like Dynamo on top of Revit, which I think is amazing. Okay, so this is what we were talking about. Uh, the surfaces are generated, the test points are generated, the sound pass is generated. So now what I want to do, I want to measure for every point like how many sounds are you going to see like the way is to draw a line right from every point to all this sound positions and intersect them with the geometries and this is what this component does or node does and you can see that it's not executed again why and my mouse is just like strange yeah, this is not Dynamo. This is me capturing video, and I had this issue before too. So okay, so now the reason this is not running is because some vectors is not connected. Where is some vector here? So I just take my some vectors. It's kind of funny when you see them like comes with a delay. Actually, interesting. So now if I run it, if we run the sunlight average, I get the sunlight average, and I use color surface and I use legend parameter to color it. I'm using 6 which is the color scheme that Ecotec used to use and like people are love are in love with that color set for some reason. I mean I like it too, it's not bad. So we have it as one of the color sets and I don't know whom we should thank for like one of the users once I uh, put it all together. Okay, let me run this while I'm talking. And now if we run the sunlight average analysis, sunlight average and radiation analysis, we realize it takes like it uses so much, oops, very fast, and it didn't use that much of memory. Okay, basically you're done. So now you can see they are all uh, colored based on the values. Uh, it will be darker back here. And in 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 Ecotech color set, like the yellow is the is the highest, and and orange is less. Maybe we should use another color set because in Ladybug is actually the other way. So the more red it is, it means like the more of the values, and that's why we need a scale there. And I use this, and I hope it doesn't crush anything. Okay, it just did a strange thing. I wanted to zoom extend. Let's try again. No, it doesn't like it. Anyways, okay, this this is kind of like what we, we got here. We have the result, we got this. And um, uh, I want to finish this video by making Dynamo crash. So uh, 
one thing which is really which should be really interesting is to be able to see to map the values here as you can do in in grasshopper right you want to see like the value as a text next to this point grasshopper has this thing um called okay now i don't remember the name it's under analyze i think labels uh by point and a string which what it means, what I understand from it, is like if you have a point and you have a label, the label should show up on the point. So okay, let's select the first test point that we have. Uh, to do that, I bring a flatten uh, node. And if if you're new to Dynamo, what I did, I left click, and it gives me this menu that I can type. It's the other way, like, so if you're a Grasshopper user, you're going to go crazy for a while because you always double click to type, and then when you double click, it will bring a code block. But it's kind of like when you work with Photoshop and AutoCAD at the same time, and then you get confused about shift. So it's kind of the same thing, like, it's not new for us. We just get used to stuff. So I just use the test points to connect them here. And then I select the first test point, uh, which I don't know where it is, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, and this is like the power of code block. So I can click there and type x0. And then when I click here, so it creates an input for me which has x because I typed x here. And then it gives me an output. It means if I connect a list here, it will select the first item. There are nodes that lets you uh, select the first item under the list. But I think like this code block is really powerful. I really like it. OK, so now I have the point. So now I need the value for that point. So these sunlight average values are the same as the values that, like the, the order are the same as, as the order of the points. And actually the first value is 13. So I just do the same, so the same uh, color, the same value, the, I get the value for the, for the same point. So what I do, I click here, I press enter and say Y0, which will create another one. This is very cool. You can do this. I connect some light hours here to Y, and I connect Y zero here as a label. Well, it's not gonna work, but it's not gonna crash. Uh, and as I said, like end of this video will be Dynamo crashed. So uh, why well, it's not gonna work? Because it needs a string, and uh, Dynamo doesn't do the casting between a string and numbers, numbers and a string, as far as I understand. Let's see if I'm right. So if I press run, you see like the things that I ran before is not gonna execute again. So this will execute, this will execute, and this one. So I press run. So what happened is this guy selected the first point here. And, oh, I forgot to flatten. Okay, my bad here. So let me, and for the first time I copy paste it, which I usually don't do because I have a thing it's gonna make stuff crash. So now actually it's cool to check the error and tell you it will it would tell there is no matching uh, I guess it's, it will say there is no matching between point and array because you're using an array here and a point here and it it's looking for an item not an array. Again this is one of the things which I think is like a painful thing in Dynamo that it doesn't have like a list input that understand like when you connect a value, it's a list with a single value. There's no such a thing. So you should take care of that. It's more closer like to people who really program more than people who, who want to use visual programming. And yes, I'm using Grasshopper as the reference. Okay, now I did it again. Now I will have a single value and a single point here, but this doesn't work again. And why is that? Because it says there is nothing to work with point and double, because this guy wants a string. Okay, I get that. Uh, let's go and create a string. So you can type here a string, which is like to a string. So now here you have a string from object, which is what I want. So th what this will do. Uh, not this one. Sorry. What this will do is it will take an object, which in this case is the is an integer, thirteen, uh, and then I connect it here as the label. 
So it gives me the string and it will be connected here as a label. So okay, I run this and it will crash. And if it doesn't crash, it means like it's how helpful it is if you want to show pe uh, an issue to other people. It's gonna work. Okay, run, boom, crashed. Yes, it crashed and if you check the details, it says 13 is not a valid value for property name. It's a bug with the by point and a string, but whenever this thing is gonna work, this is the process to see the numbers there. Um, am I going to report this to Dynamo team? Yes, of course I will. So you can submit the bug to GitHub, but I think I just send them the link to the to the video. But you guys, if you don't do a video or something, submit the bug to GitHub. It's pretty easy. You just click here. It will open up the the page for you. And I'm trying to bring the page here. And then you can say new issue and copy this error that you have here and say this is what I did, like capture screen and something and this is what happened. They are pretty responsive and, and, and as I said this is under development so and it's going to be something that you're going to use for a long time especially if you're a young person watching this video or if you're an older person so many people on your team are going to uh, use this uh, so your project time is going to go for this so I think it's better to to report them so all of us will have a better interface at the end of the day. Okay, thank you for watching uh, and I think this will be the last one for tonight. I will do more videos on the sky calculation and radiation uh, later and then I will upload them in the same playlist. Uh, stay tuned, again uh, you can follow Ladybug on Twitter uh, we have a Facebook page and then you know the group on Grasshopper and you know the GetUp. Thanks for watching. Cheers.